I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is like the month of broken PCs. So what we have right here, uh, oh, by the way, if you guys are enjoying 31 Days of Tech Mist, just hit like down and subscribe because this was a hard month. Let's, let's give a round of applause to the team. Yay! Oh, geez. All right, so what we have here is a friend's computer that just traveled all the way down from Alaska. Uh, the final frontier? No, that's space. The wild frontier. The last frontier. We don't own Antarctica, who cares? So anyway, this is a brand new system. It's a uh, Ryzen 3600. It's a, I don't know, it's got G-Skill Ripjaws memory. It's an RG Strix motherboard and it's not really had a chance to do anything because the moment he plugged everything in and turned it on, it immediately started smoking. And I don't mean it took up the bad habit of smoking or vaping. It literally smoked the hard drives, uh, the SATA drives. So he's replaced the motherboard. All the other parts are essentially the same. This is the same graphics card, the same memory, the same CPU, my cooler. Um, doesn't have the state of drives and stuff hooked up, but even though he replaced the motherboard, he's got some crazy instabilities happening with the system. So I told him to bring it down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna troubleshoot what went wrong, see if we can get it fixed and up and running, and then we'll kind of take you guys along for the ride. These are the ones that I think that are fun because most people don't have a studio full of parts hanging around that they can use to just start swapping in parts and be, do the automotive thing of just, let's just throw parts at it and see what happens. So let's go ahead and see how this goes and uh, see if we can't figure out what exactly went wrong. So he's had all kinds of weirdness in that he doesn't get the same problem consistently. He'll get, AA will show up on the motherboard, which is actually a good post with ASUS codes, um, but no video. He'll get video other times, and then he'll get like uh, blue screens. He'll have the keyboard USB, or the USB keyboard freak out where you push one key and it just continues across the board without the key being stuck. Uh, if he does get the system running, he'll try heaven. He'll get like 20 seconds where it will completely crash. Is it hard lock, blue screen, what does it do? Blue, screen. blue screens. I have a sneaky suspicion that the CPU is damaged in a way, he's tried, so here's things that he's already tried, and of course we have to do this ourselves too. He's tried each stick of RAM individually. Because my first thought was, smoke is never a good thing. And it smoked the second he turned it on. He even physically heard an arcing buzzing sound. Now it was a gigabyte power supply. Um, I asked him if we could test the power supply. He sent it back under RMA, unfortunately. Um, we weren't able to get that back before it was delivered back. Because I would have loved to have tested that power supply. I have some stuff I could have hooked it up with. Um, First things first, I wish you had asked me before you bought a gigabyte power supply because I would have told you, dude, stay as far away as you possibly can. Recommendation number one, don't buy gigabyte power supplies. Just stick with brands that, that know what they're doing with power supplies. Second of all, um, he's tried each stick of memory individually. And he says the problem's fairly persist persistent with any stick or any combination of, of dual channel. He's got four sticks of RAM in here, as you can see. So based on the problems he's describing, I would have thought it was initially memory, and that's the first thing I went to, and we haven't tested any of this yet, but the fact that he said he's tried each stick individually with the same problems tells me, okay, it's not a bad stick, unless they all experience some sort of dead chips, who knows? Uh, memory can still work, actually, with, with bad um, modules on there, and that's when you do things like mem test or whatnot to make sure they're all working properly. It doesn't mean the CPU couldn't have a damaged memory controller. We don't know what smoked. Um, they were SATA drives, both of them went up in smoke. So we don't know if it was 3.3 volt, we don't know if it was five volt or 12 volt. So it's possible the CPU could have gotten overvolted uh, through bridging, which could have damaged components in the CPU. Now I usually believe that CPUs were either worked or they didn't, until I've experienced my own issues before in the past where CPUs can have things start to go wrong on them. I would have initially said that uh, it could have been the motherboard, but this is a different motherboard. It's the same graphics card, but one of the other things, again, with Gigabyte, this particular graphics card has uh, the riser for the power, and it's like trying to plug in Molex, getting these things go all the way down and click without pushing pins out. It's a terrible design. Um, it's unfortunate, but I don't think this was a problem. These are all 12 volt and ground that go through here. So I have a feeling if it had a problem here, like it, let's say something arced in there when you're trying to plug this in, the, I think the smoke would have started here, not at the, at, the, at the hard drives. So the reason why I haven't powered this on or anything yet is again, he said his initial problem started on the first build with clicking it on. Now, in terms of the power supply or the, the motherboard grounding on the case, he said it is a Thermaltake P3, but you've got to try really hard, I think, to, to ground anything motherboard wise. You'd have to have a seriously pinched cable. I don't have the case here or the hard drives or the SATA cables or anything, so I can't, it's like, inspect those. But powering this on 
For the first time, we have a motherboard lighting up. We don't have any smoke yet. All right, do we have any, sur we don't have surface buttons on here, so I need to get, you know what I'm gonna use? What should I use? I think we should use, so I'm just gonna bridge together the power button, the power switch prongs on here as if it were a button. Now I'm half expecting everything to just work. CPU fan air, that's interesting. It's turning and I have it plugged in. That's pump, that's optional. So the printing, where they're printing it on the motherboard makes no sense, whatever. Okay, so that's working fine. If this all works, this is quite literally the worst possible outcome. I said this could potentially be like the car mechanic situation where your car only does it for you, but not the mechanic. And then it does it while you're leaving the mechanic after he says he couldn't get it to do the thing. That would mean that the common denominator here is the, the case that I can't test. Cause we are testing on this standoff deal right here. This is the little boards that come with it. It's actually a PCB, but this is a PCB tray that comes with all the EVGA boards when you do overclocking. Um, I'm just doing that so it's not sitting on a cardboard box, but. Yeah. Asus fanboy. Let's just try heaven here and see what happens. It like starts and goes away. So this is some of the weirdness he started to talk about. Now this is a fresh install on, a, on an NVMe. So I'll move you right now, see if I can't get heaven to even start. But the way I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add remove programs on this. Fresh install in heaven won't work. The, won't, installer. the installer's breaking. Let's just see if it'll complete a benchmark because he said it wouldn't before. Why can't it ever just be like, yeah, this is, it just doesn't work. Why is it, why, why does the universe have to work this way? All right, so we were talking about this. It passed, he said he's never got this to pass, but we were talking about where he lives in Alaska right now. Um, and he's, he's, so he's active duty, he's up in Alaska, Fairbanks area? Yeah, by Fairbanks. He was explaining to me that this time of year, the wind will actually blow snow over the house. So I, I was like, how old's the house? He said newish, you know, it's, it's a um, base housing. I said, what's the power like there? He said, well, they're, they're coal, they're coal power plants, but we're talking extremely cold temperatures through line transmission. And we're also talking about extremely high static. So the snow covering the house and being blown over in the wind all creates static energy. Ask me how I know. But if you're being insulated by snow at that point, think of igloos, right? There's a reason why igloos are what Eskimos live in. The whole idea of an igloo is the fact that you build this enclosure, this shelter out of ice and stuff, you become insulated by it. The same thing can happen with the snow and he's creating an insulation thing where he could have such high static buildup in his house that everything he's experiencing is just simply the air. Humidifier is not gonna help because we're talking about something, a natural phenomenon that's so much greater than a humidifier that he can put in there. So if we can't get this to crash today, it doesn't explain the fire still. That's just the power supply, and it looks like it took the old motherboard out with it. But you might really need to look at getting a UPC just to help get the power delivery a little cleaner. I still wanna do some, some stress testing on the CPU and stuff, but it's looking like this hardware is actually fine. It's, it's looking, you might just be at the mercy of your environment, honestly. All right, so let's just see uh, if this will crash. At this point, I'm, I'm not confident that it's going to. which really sucks for you, Josh, because that means I have absolutely nothing I can do for you. <laughs> that sucks. It's possible the riser cable could have a bad PCB. It could have a small broken wire. That's the one thing we haven't tested yet. He, so that case does require a riser, right? NZXT knows a thing about riser cables and potential fires. So this is clearly not gonna crash. Let's go ahead and shut it down. Let's put the um, riser cable on and see if we experience any other weirdness. I have purchased inexpensive riser cables off of Amazon before. And I have noticed that there is a striking resemblance between those and the ones that Thermaltake uses. And I have had one in the past that caused me a problem where the cheap ones typically, and I'm not entirely positive if the, this one from Thermaltake is the same. There's a difference between shielded and unshielded riser cables where if he's dealing with the amount of static energy that he is, 
and you now add this much surface area of connection to deal with uh, static interference, could explain some of the problems that he is experiencing with his graphics card. That's like really sharp bend, look at that. It's like creased even, okay, well let's see. So when you put it on the chassis, yeah, cause it's like that, right? So look at that sharp bend. We got the riser card on there now. I don't like how sharp that bend is, but it should, it should be fine unless you start bending it back and forth, back and forth a bunch. I really want the problem to, I want something to happen. So far this is, the mouse stopped working and then we just got a black screen. It's back. <laughs> uh, well, that's not normal though. At least, at least I was saying I want something to happen and something that was something. Well, I noticed the mouse wasn't moving at first. I was like, why is the mouse not moving? And then the screen went black. Direct 3D error. Failed engine, video start. But it started it again anyway. I just, why is it, why is it so little? It, for, <laughs> yeah, I think it's the riser cable. So now I'm just gonna, I know that wasn't good, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, so he was saying that if he had to like power cycle it like that, he would then get Q code errors starting it back up. So let's see. No? It could be the, the way I'm holding it though, it's... So I think if this is causing a physical problem, then that'll affect post, obviously, because it can't communicate with the, with the GPU properly. All right, so I'm gonna shut this down the right way now. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I like how there's four people in here and yet I'm doing it this way. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna change out this riser cable. So it's the riser cable, not surprised. I don't expect Thermaltake to actually spend decent money on this stuff. You guys spend good money on their cases because they charge enough for them, but then they give you crap. The irony, I've got my fractal design riser cable in there because I, I can't find my other ones I'm talking about. Um, considering the fact Thermaltake ripped off one of their cases a while back. So we use a, we use a fractal product to make it work. It's funny, I've had people ask me in the past, are riser, riser cables bad? And I was like, no, but they are when they're the cheap knockoff unshielded ones. Okay, so remember last time I would hit run and then it would immediately give me like that crazy, you no, know, it, it was saying there was no GPU memory is what it was saying, but now look. So, that's your problem. So now we gotta get one in here that's the same length and mounts to this for him. Cause you know what? Even if you ask Thermaltake to replace it, who knows how long it'll take and who knows, who knows if it'll do it again? Cause of the crazy sharp angle he has to put on that. Let's just make sure it passes the benchmark. But I think based on what we were seeing before versus now, I'm feeling pretty confident that the problem is figured out. I don't believe it to be related to the crazy power supply smoke issue. I think this is truly just a physical limitation of this. I don't believe this could have been damaged without damaging the graphics card. Like the resistors and stuff that are on here don't look damaged in any way. There's no burn marks on here. Can't see the inside of it, but that doesn't mean anything. The nice thing is if you look at proper riser cables, all this is a short one, the cable comes out at a 90 degree angle to the PCI slot. But if you look at this one, it's 180 degree, it's straight. So to get it to go where it needs, that goes up there and then that goes like that. So think of this as like a metal wire. You bend it back and forth too many times, it breaks. And there's probably broken wires along in here. So, which is why it can't communicate with the graphics card properly. Let's get one modded. We're just gonna drill some holes actually. In fact, there's no point in even doing this part of the video. We're just gonna mark the holes with the uh, new riser cable or whatever I end up putting in there. We'll drill holes, we'll put a screw and nut on there. Then you should be fine. Get good riser cables. Hey, I flew all the way back from Rochester, New York once with a pizza, like a full pizza box. <laughs> now the whole way home, the flight attendants, everybody was like, you know, you can't bring that on the plane unless you brought enough for everybody. And I'm like, <laughs> out of the seat. And everyone in the back was like, did you see limbs? Like, ah. This is an ROG one though. It says ROG right on it. Yeah, I put an ROG sticker over the Thermaltake logo. Okay, I actually approve of that, that's fine. <laughs>